Hello there. Mark Drakeford's Wales becomes even more woke with its updated banned word list. Oh yes, there's a banned word list in Wales. But thankfully not for everyone. Yet. Just for the devolved assembly's civil service. This is all laid out in the Welsh Government's style guide so that government officials know what words to use and not to use when drafting all that red tape. And one of the banned words, says the Express, is Brexit. And another example is the phrase Her Majesty. The guide also insists on using the term UK Government instead of HM Government and the word Government must have a small letter G. Whereas the terms Welsh Government and Welsh Assembly are to have a capital G and a capital A respectively. Another word the Welsh Government with a big G doesn't like is BAME. Welsh Government writers are to use the full term Black, Asian and Minority Ethnic. And if referring to this again on the same page of a document, they are to use ethnic minority or ethnic minority communities. Although Mark Drakeford himself does use the term BAME in his statement on the All Wales COVID-19 Workforce Risk Assessment Tool. The term able-bodied is also outlawed. Writers must instead use the term non-disabled. Now, the Express says that one Welsh civil servant said the rules were ridiculous and that only one word was missing from that list, and that was the word woke. While another said it's like looking over your shoulder every time you send an email. While the Times reports that Andrew R.T. Davies, the Welsh Tory Seneth leader, claimed that the Welsh Government had well and truly lost the plot over this and that the Welsh Government should be concentrating on more worthwhile things than this nonsense, adding Only last week we had ministers cancelling women from sex education in Wales and now they're consigning Brexit and Her Majesty to the political correctness bin. It's a bonkers misuse of public money and a complete and utter waste of time. Civil servants who are just looking to get on with their day job shouldn't be subjected to such nonsense. Another example here is the use of the words commit or pledge. They are instead advised to be more specific. We're either doing something or we're not, says the guide. And then there's other words that you see littered across politician statements that are on the words to avoid list. Dialogue. Advancing. Empower. Impact. Initiate. Liaise. Robust. Utilise. And the list goes on. And here's a nice specific one for you. According to the guide, it is written... Zero hours contract, with a hyphen between zero and hours, and not as zero hour contract or zero hours contract. How specific can you get? Now many people might look at this and wonder what the Welsh Government is up to. Have they gone all 1984 on us or something? Now I know that many of you will want to have a go at Mark Drakeford over this. But for the sake of accuracy and completeness, I have to point out that just about every single large organisation in the world has such a style sheet for how their literature and statements are to be presented. And one such entity is the UK government. And believe it or not, this guidance also says that it is always UK government and never HM government. And neither does it refer to the opposition as Her Majesty's loyal opposition. But interestingly, the word government here does use a capital G when writing UK government, as opposed to how the Welsh want you to write it. 
And even the UK government style sheet puts Brexit into the historical state saying, You can use the term Brexit to provide historical context, but it's better to use specific dates where possible. And it too has a words to avoid list, many of the same ones that appear on the Welsh government list, all based on the use of plain English. And unsurprisingly to some, the UK government style sheet asks you to refer to the Guardian and Observer newspaper style guide for specific guidance in the areas of the use of hyphens. And the Guardian only refers to the words Brexiter, or if referring to a specific person, Brexiteer. Although it doesn't use the word, even the Guardian doesn't seem to have pulled the word Brexit completely from its lexicon. And one imagines the Express will also have its own style guide for journalists and editors. And the Royal Navy, Army and Royal Air Force have their style guides for their officers. Then of course there's De Brett's, the style guide for the nation. So wading in against the Welsh government here may be a bit unfair, just a bit. So I toddled off to the Scottish government site to find their style guide. And all I could find was, please refer to the UK government style guide. Left me gobsmacked, I tell you. Unless they've got their own squirrelled away somewhere else, of course. But... They are all flying in the face of the latest woke thinking. Oh yes, these style guides insist on the correct words and phrases to use with the correct use of capital letters and proper use of hyphens and apostrophes and all the grammatical paraphernalia. But as we all know, things like good English and grammar are now considered as elitist and not something to aspire to. According to the Times back in April, requiring good English could be seen as homogenous, North European, white, male, elite. And it went on to say that Hull University has said it will challenge the status quo by dropping the requirement for a high level of technical proficiency in written and spoken English in some subjects, a requirement it described as white, male and elite. How on earth could their graduates fare within an organisation that demands strict form and adherence to a writing style guide? Well, we all know the answer to that one, don't we? The style guides will have to go, to be replaced with a list of words and phrases that people can use based on their own specific ethnic backgrounds, and words and phrases certain other people are banned from using. But apart from that, full stops, commas, spelling, colons, apostrophes and the proper use of capital letters should all be thoroughly ignored. So given the Guardian's stance on these matters, I'm surprised it has a style sheet at all. Oh yes, it won't be long until whatever someone writes, however illegible or unfathomable it is, must be acceptable, or it's white male and elite. And we can't be having that, can we? So what's your opinion on the new Welsh civil service list of banned words? Please like and comment below. Please subscribe and like this video, buy a mug and support me on Patreon or PayPal and thank you for watching.